Aloha guys. Uh, I just wanted to put together a vlog to talk more about, you know, why I cho chose to learn Hawaiian and what my journey has been so far. Um, as for choosing to learn it, I mean, I think in general, I am just fascinated by languages. You know, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to know like 10 different languages. I mean, I remember the first language I tried to learn besides English was American Sign Language and I had this book where it taught you like the alphabet and maybe some animals and so I probably remember most of the alphabet and I think I remember like horse was like something like this or something um yeah and then you know there weren't a lot of resources for me to learn languages growing up I mean growing up in San Diego, I was in like bilingual kindergarten, so I learned a little Spanish and you just like picked up Spanish just living in San Diego. Um, so I know, in a, I don't know, some Spanish words, but then in high school I took French, in college I took German and Italian, um, and then as an adult I have tried to teach myself Japanese, I got pretty far there. Um, and then just in general, you know, I kind of collect language textbooks or just books to help you learn foreign languages. In fact, I mean, I'll show you my collection. Yeah, so in general, just fascinated by languages, um, but why Hawaiian? Uh, well, because I am part Hawaiian, um, though I am part a lot of things. I mean, actually I took, I mean, I knew my background just from speaking to my family, but I did take one of those ancestry DNA tests, which of course aren't uh, completely accurate, uh, but here was my breakdown, or at least here's my breakdown right now. I am, 37% England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe. That's mostly from my mom's side, though a little bit from my dad's side as well. 26% uh, Philippines. That would be from my paternal grandfather. 12% uh, Polynesia, specifically Hawaii, Tonga, Samoa. So that is from my paternal grandmother. Her father, my great-grandfather was uh, native Hawaiian as well as um, a little bit English. 8% Ireland and Scotland, 5% China, 4% Middle East just in general, 3% Dai, 2% Italy, 2% Sweden which we think are Vikings, and 1% Samoa. So a huge mix um, and as someone who is Hapa, who is mixed, you know, I think a lot of people who are mixed or hapa can tell you that it's kind of hard sometimes to, you know, have that sense of identity with regards to like heritage and background. Um, but I will say like the one culture I did grow up probably strongest or most closely um, connected to was the Hawaiian culture. So both of my paternal grandparents, my dad's parents were born and raised in Hawaii. Um, and while they, you know, moved away when they were adults, um, you know, they still had a lot of that Hawaiian culture and they were the grandparents that were near us growing up and we would spend summers with them. And, and so, you know, just being exposed to the music, to the food, to just that like kind of easy, hospitable lifestyle. Um, so I've always wanted to know Hawaiian growing up there really were not any resources for me. You know, I grew up in California, so, um, you know, even though there was like a revival of the language in Hawaii in like the 70s and definitely in the 80s with immersion schools, you know, I didn't have access to those as a kid. Um, but, you know, with, you know, the advent of the internet and, 
like apps and resources, it's just like a lot easier to be able to access, you know, learning tools. And so specifically, um, so it's early May of 2020 and I'm up in the Bay Area of California. So we have been sheltering in place for more than a month and a half. And at the beginning of shelter place, you know, we were stuck at home and I was trying to think of what I was gonna do with my time. And I thought, oh, I should start using Duolingo again, the language learning app. You know, I had used Duolingo when it was pretty new and didn't have that many languages, um, but I used it to brush up on my French. And then a little later when they were adding more languages, I started using it to really strengthen my Japanese. Uh, I used it a lot for that in preparation of a trip to Japan. But ever since that trip to Japan two years ago, I really hadn't used the app. And so when I fired it up again, I think I actually had to re-download it because it had been that long. Um, they had all these additional languages, including Hawaiian. And so I hopped on that right away. I sped through, I mean, I didn't speed through, but I like would spend the whole day going through Hawaiian lessons. Um, and I learned a lot, but I will say the one thing that I've experienced with Duolingo is that um, they don't really give you the grammar rules. And so for languages where the grammar is a bit different, it can be hard to understand what those are. Like, so for Japanese, I had to go to a different resource. Like I have a Japanese grammar book and I had to just read through and get a basic understanding of the grammar before I was able to really kind of catch on to what I was being taught in Duolingo. So I had to do that with Hawaiian too. Um, it was kind of hard to find a single source of that. I really had to cobble it together across many different sources. I mean, I feel like when I search the internet, you either have things that don't really focus on the grammar at all or give a really surface level view of it um, or just really academic texts that do a deep, deep, deep dive and it's a lot to read. And um, I did take the time to read that because I just, I'm just someone who needs to know the grammar. Um, and so that's, I think where I went. And that was kind of the inspiration for my YouTube channel is I thought, you know, if anybody's like me and they really need to know the basic grammar of a language when they're learning it, um, I'd love to just do a series where I can just go through the basics, not focus too much on vocabulary, but just really give people the building blocks so they understand the rules and then they can use resources like Duolingo to learn more about the vocabulary. Um, yeah, and it's been really rewarding. Uh, I think naturally through learning the language, I also just learn a lot about the Hawaiian culture and history. Um, and yeah, I mean like a few decades ago, this language was on the brink of dying and thanks to the work of amazing researchers, there was a resurgence, there were, you know, like immersion schools um, starting in the 80s. Um, it's still an endangered language and so I feel really proud to try to do my part to keep it alive and you know I just had my first child in November and I would love for him to grow up knowing at least a little bit of Hawaiian. Um, I know it still might be hard to be completely fluent with us being in California and not having access to the immersion schools but um, the more I know the more I can teach him and um, I hope some of you join me on this journey too because it's such a beautiful language um, and it deserves to keep surviving. Thanks guys.